Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate it if you consider supporting us as well. So click to the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Seva, and today we're investigating a very interesting and elegant in its simplicity, yet somewhat understudied and underappreciated, in my opinion, volatility model, which is the heterogeneous autoregressive volatility model, or HA for short, first developed by Corsi relatively recently in 2009. This model has the advantage of not relying on maximum likelihood to be estimated. It can be estimated using OLS, quite strikingly, that's very untypical for volatility models. And it is also very straightforward in terms of forecasting volatility um, over various uh, future time horizons. Uh, it also demonstrates reasonably good fit compared to other volatility models, primarily various gauche extensions. And it takes advantage of either uh, open high low close candles, which are quite commonly used for more information to be presented in terms of the dynamics of the market, or more frequently nowadays, using uh, intraday high frequency data, for example, minutely, uh, hourly data that uh, has become recently available in the modern day of age for most financial markets of interest. In this video, I'll present uh, an application of HA based on OHLC candles. However, if you would like me to do so in the future, uh, please leave a comment and I'll also do an implementation based on intraday high frequency data. The idea is to relate the variance, realized variance, at a particular day to the unconditional component omega. Here is where it borrows directly from the GARSH specification, nothing wrong about that. Uh, the lagged realized variance in the previous day, as well as average realized variance uh, over the past week, and average realized variance over the past month. Uh, Corsi here um, proposes that you do not need to implement too much lagged terms to capture most of the relevant conditional variance dynamics, as realized variance could be explained as, uh, well, a quantity dependent on a realized variance yesterday, realized variance last week, and realized variance last month. You do not need to overcomplicate the model more than that. And that's the beauty of the HA model, the beauty in its simplicity and uh, uh, intuitive uh, content that it uh, has. So for the estimation, we first need to calculate realized uh, variances for um, the sample days. We have got uh, S&P 500 data for a 10 uh, year period from year end 2012 until year end 2022. We'll seek to estimate the HAR model and then forecast uh, the variance of uh, S&P 500 50 days ahead. And for the realized variance proxy, we'll use the Parkinson uh, variance estimator. We had a couple of videos on Parkinson volatility estimation previously, including its definition and also its application to market efficiency measurement. Here, we're using it as our input, as our measure of realized variance. We need to calculate the logarithm of high price divided by low price squared and perform the common adjustment, which is four times natural logarithm of two in the denominator. That allows us to calculate the realized uh, variance in a particular day. However, uh, this is a very small number given that our variance is daily and uh, um, it is a squared term, isn't it? So to make it a little bit more um, interpretable and uh, so that we don't have to um, look at too many decimal places, I suggest multiplying it by a factor of 10,000, which is 100 squared. So here we will effectively be looking at percentage variance, the variance of return in percentages, which is also quite understandable and which generates a number that's much easier on the eye. We apply it all the way throughout. Here we had forecasts, so we can delete the errors that are associated with the fact that we well we don't know the prices for the future, we'll seek to fill those in with our hard model output. And now we need to estimate our realized variance in the previous day, 
we can do it using a simple lag operator and apply it throughout. Then we can calculate our uh, realized variance over the past week. Uh, a week is five trading days on average. So we can see where we have got five uh, realized variances estimated. Over here, we have got five lagged realized variances. So we can calculate the average of those five. And again, apply it throughout. And then we need the realized variance in the past month. Here we have got a quite a curious um, observation. Corsi himself developed this for uh, European markets, where you've got less weekends generally than uh, on the US markets. So uh, Corsi suggested we choose 22 uh, trading days, as there are more typically 22 trading days in a European trading month. Uh, we'll stick with that, but if you are using uh, US data, you can always go for 21 as your measure of choice for the number of trading days uh, in a month, and therefore your uh, lag length for calculating the average realized variance in the past month. So here we can see when do we get 22 days for the first time to calculate our average. And this is the first day where we can. So we calculated across 22 previous um, trading days and enforce it throughout. And then we can simply delete the errors associated with uh, forecasts that we do not know the uh, projected realized variances yet. And for this very reason, we can estimate the HAR model. We can select a four by five range, so there are always five rows in the Linus template. And we've got three explanatory variables plus the constant. Again, the constant is the unconditional variance. And we've got daily, weekly, and monthly uh, lagged uh, realized variances as our explanatory variables. So we can enforce the Linus function, select the realized variances uh, from the day we can first calculate all the explanatory variables until the very end, and we can select our three explanatory variables uh, as our x variables. We input one as we do on the constant, that's our unconditional variance, and we want the additional statistics to perform significance testing. Then we enforce this using shift control enter, and we get our Linus template uh, in front of us. For T stats, we can divide the coefficients by the respective standard errors, and we can perform usual two-tailed T distribution significance testing for the coefficients, plugging in the absolute values of T statistics and the degrees of freedom, which are the same across all tests, so we lock them. And dragging it across, we see that there are very significant uh, effects of uh, daily and weekly uh, realized variance. So persistence is captured in this case. Uh, the coefficients uh, are also quite uh, intuitive. They are of very typical magnitude to what you would see in an application of an arch model or a gauge model. However, there is little to no um, persistence on a monthly frequency. So uh, volatility persistence or variance persistence dissipates more quickly than a monthly uh, average realized variance can take off. So our variance persistence is actually more short term than the um, Corsi uh, specification um, presumes. However, we still got very significant effects uh, for daily and weekly, and we can see that the R squared is 0 0.63. We explain 63% of variation in our realized variance using such a simple specification, which is obviously very good news. Now, in terms of the forecast, we can quite easily drag the uh, like daily, like weekly, and like monthly formulas one step ahead, because they would still refer to the real world data. They would not refer to any empty cells. That means that we can perform the one day ahead forecast very naturally without making any uh, extra assumptions, without feeding in other forecasts into the model, which is what some volatility models um, seek you to do. So one day ahead forecast would involve adding to the constant that we've just estimated for the HAR model, uh, one day lagged realized variance times by the respective coefficient that we have to lock, plus the one week lagged realized variance, and we can multiply it by the respective coefficient locked, and finally, monthly average realized variance times the respective coefficient 
lock. And then this can be bottleneck clicked all the way down, and we can see how our forecast evolves over time. There is some notable convergence. At some point, these values would all converge to the uh, long run value of our uh, realized variance. This is the property that is uh, quite standard across uh, different classes of uh, variance or volatility models. However, we see some uh, quite interesting um, dynamics here with uh, uh, one day um, realized variance directly feeding off to the forecast and the uh, more long-term figures still picking in a range of real-world values before they also converge. This is a very welcome property of the HAL model, as it allows to model quite complex various dynamics with a very easy and uh, simplistic toolbox. However, it also has a number of limitations. First of all, it's as good as your estimator of realized variance is. If you don't believe something like the Parkinson volatility estimator, uh, you cannot fully trust the uh, output of the HAR model. Using intraday data for this is a little bit uh, more precise, a little bit more favorable. Uh, next, uh, there is some bias involved in the estimation of realized variance, and this is what further extensions of the model, such as the HAR-Q model, that also introduces realized quarticity, so higher moment measures, into the estimation. This is what these models seek to address. They are a little bit more complicated, a little bit less straightforward, and uh, again, a little bit less um, straightforward in terms of forecasting. However, they do address the biases that are uh, associated with uh, measurement errors for uh, realized variances. Uh, however, this model is still uh, a very useful and underappreciated tool for variance modeling. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm interested to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you'd like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and support us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.